I do. I, I would like to show you this uh, mammillaria flower. Now you see those. Oh look, there's a guy in there. What's he doing on there? Anyway, those bunch of those yellow filaments. Those are actually the male uh, parts. They're called the stamens. It goes that pollen anther filament uh, from the top down. And then of course this uh, white thing. This actually, excuse me, it's green, uh, which not which is not quite open yet. This the stigma. Which uh, of course receives the the pollen. It's the female part. Now, not all cactus flowers uh, <clears throat> have both of these. This is uh, of course a perfect flower. It's got both the male and female parts. But uh, some uh, cactus flowers only have stamens, and some only have a stigma. Uh, the cylindrical punches. The choyas do that a lot. They'll be a uh, unisexual. This is a mammillaria. Is indicated by. The fact that it flowers in a concentric ring around the apex and the fact that, uh, well, at least in this case, the uh, the spines are uh, hooked. But not all cactus with spines uh, that are hooked are mams, I would like to point out. Also, how lovely it is to see uh, this uh, Fucaria columnaris, a.k.a. the blue jum tree, uh, in full leaf uh, due to the fact that it... Uh, the place has been fucking inundated with uh, rain lately. Now, I was here in October, and uh, much of it looked like shit. Uh, the surrounding region, that is. Oh, what is this? It's another Mammillaria. A brand DGI, possibly. Uh, due to the fact that it's almost a completely uh, oppressed to the soil. See those tubercles? Those little nipples are the tubercles. Dicolostoma going up. Wonderful corn producing geophyte in the uh, asparagus order, like agaves and yuccas. But, uh, and, oh, here's one flowering. They call these blue dicks. Is in kick me in a blue dicks. Another species of uh, Dudleya. And of course, uh, everything here is covered in in lichen being that we're uh, somewhat close to the ocean and uh, the fog is very abundant here's another burgero cactus getting ready to flower beautiful yellow flowers on this uh, on this burgero cactus and look this is all new growth uh, from the rains in the last uh, two or three months anyway sunward you can see there's a whole uh, uh, I guess little Grove, if you could call it that, a population of these uh, Cirios, C I R I O, aka the Bujums, a relative of Ocotillo, same genus, Fucaria, if you can pronounce that. It's a little hard. Now, of course, here's one that the hippies love. This is Salvia apiana. Uh, most claim that it, uh, it has uh, some sort of healing properties. I think it's kind of horseshit. It does smell very nice, and it's important uh, ecologically. Is uh, it gets these huge inflorescences just covered in uh, very ne nectariferous flowers. Is that a word? Did I just make a word up? Can you do that? I think you could do that. They produce a lot of nectar, in other words. And then it's a, it's a perennial, of course, but it can die back uh, in times of drought or hardship, and then uh, it'll just come back uh, when the rains come up. Here, of course, oh, look, there's a gall on this one. Laid by some kind of small wasp. Very interesting. How lovely. Here we have a very important and uh, speciated genus of uh, the pea family, the legume family. Ubiquitous uh, throughout Western North America. Uh, Astragalus is the name, a.k.a. loco weed. Now it's got probably close to 4,000 species in it, so I don't really fuck with it too much because it's a little hard to narrow it down. So I couldn't tell you what species this is, except that I do admire them. And uh, they, of course, are important. And uh, they're important for pollinators and ecologically very uh, successful uh, genus. Ecologically successful, comprising both perennials and annuals. Not sure if this is, uh, it looks like it's coming back from, uh, like it's a perennial, like it's coming back from a taproot. This, of course, is a peritile, looks like peritile. Uh, it's notable for the asters in that, of course, each one of these disc flowers has four lobes. Now, now here's a flower, and inside that flower, this is not actually the flower. This is what's called a capitulescence, meaning it's it's a composite flower, 
like all members of the sunflower family. And in, in here, it's probably got 20 or 30 additional flowers, which are those little tiny yellow dots. Now, those tiny yellow dots are called florets. And what I mean by having four lobes is that uh, it's got basically four petals all fused together. Uh, each florid does inside that capitulescence. Oh, nice dudley getting ready to flower over there. Look at that. Wonderful succulent. And of course, uh, here, uh, much more interesting to some of you, this might be, uh, again, is that uh, Fulcaria columnaris, aka the Cirio, C I R I O, or the Bujum tree, depending on uh, whatever colloquial name you might prefer. It's also important to note that Linnaeus, uh, back in his day, about three, four hundred years ago, when he was coming up with this binomial uh, system for classifying organisms, when it came to plants, he chose to uh, classify them by their uh, their sexual attributes, their flower. And of course, uh, people back then were just as ridiculous and idiotic as they are today, and this offended many of them because it's uh, in in essence classifying an organism by its genitals and i can understand why if you were a puritanical asshole uh, back in the 16 1700s you might be offended by that because this mammalaria here is displaying a full frontal nudity uh, just in this uh, beautiful full frontal nudity i mean you're really getting the complete uh, the complete the uh, full you know years worth of uh, a playboy right here or play girl uh, depending on uh, your sexual orientation and uh, how you identify. Now, you could see these flowers are just fucking gorgeous over here. Look at how lovely it is. Isn't that nice? Perfect flowers, green stigmas, dozens of yellow stamens, which, of course, all cactus flowers have dozens of stamens. And right next to it is another species of mammalaria. Again, this is mammalaria brandegii which uh, recesses into the soil, much like Mammillaria hydri from Texas and a couple other uh, uh, mams. The genus Mammillaria now has probably two, three hundred, four hundred uh, species in it. Now, it is hard to believe that this uh, spiny, this little spiny shrub, which uh, I just uh, nearly tripped on, you could see it's a very bulbous stem down there. It's hard to believe that this, oh, look at this lovely cyanobacter, or lichenus, it's a lichen, excuse me, probably with a cyanobacteria inside crust. Anyway, it's hard to believe that this little spiny shrub right here it could morph into this, this uh, enormous uh, cereal, which of course takes on a variety of shapes. Don't know what happened to that one. You know, it just had to be different, I guess. Some people are like that. And of course, uh, they're just covered in uh, in foliage due to the uh, recent rain. Now, one of the most interesting attributes about deserts, of course, is that they do uh, the ground in many of these uh, arid environments does harbor a wonderful crust. What you're looking at here is probably... Uh, I don't know, five or six different species of lichen at least. Now lichens, of course, being comprised of both a fungus and an algae, or uh, or perhaps a cyanobacteria. It's somewhat hard to tell unless you uh, get up in there. But uh, it's pretty wonderful. It's important in both uh, adding nitrogen to the soil, as the cyanobacteria do, they're nitrogen fixing many of them, and also in stabilizing the soil and preventing erosion. And in helping other uh, plants get uh, established, much like it did for this mammillaria, a dioica right there. Some of the colors on this is beautiful too. And of course, this all gets destroyed when some asshole takes his OHV or his dirt bike out there for, uh, for you know, uh, 10 minutes of joy riding and filming himself doing it so he can watch it later. Don't really understand that sport. It seems kind of pointless. Uh, sometimes I wish uh, some of those people would die or at least they uh, get hit on the head and come to their senses about what they're doing. Like it's a Stenoceris gamosus fruit, the galloping cactus. And it's still got a fruit on it. Delicious fruit if you can uh, get rid of all those spines. Oh, 
it's a folios lichen, or this is maybe a fruticus lichen. Let's look. Let's look at this uh, beautiful Bergero cactus samurai in flower. Uh, como se dice, uh, real nice. Anyway, here's one more plant uh, before I, I depart and, and leave you. It's, uh, it's in the maple family, Sapindaceae. And uh, here it is flowering, Aesculus perii. Now this particular species is very rare in that it's a Baja endemic, endemic to northern Baja that is. Uh, closer to the coast, it does not occur by the Sea of Cortez. Uh, it's one of only two species of Aesculus on the west coast. The other is Californica, of course, which is a, a much larger plant. Both are what you call drought deciduous, meaning they lose their leaves in about July uh, or August when the full brutal heat of uh, the dry season uh, in this Mediterranean climate uh, kicks in. Very beautiful flowers. Now, despite, the, despite this massive spike of uh, what must be 40 flowers, only a handful of them will be pollinated and turn into seeds that are about the size of marbles. And this is about the, the maximum height that this species tops out at. Again, this Aesculus perii, uh, also named after a, a dead guy. Don't know why they do that, kind of wish they didn't, but they do. And uh, it's what, three, four feet tall? Most I've seen them is like five or six feet tall. But it's really nice to see them growing with these massive cacti. Uh, it's pretty odd for the genus. And it taxonomically, according to molecular DNA evidence, supposedly this is not that closely related to Aesculus californica, its northern cousin, which occurs in Oregon and California. It's more closely related to uh, some of the uh, Asian taxa.